Hi everybody, good morning! Welcome to Art Day. It's a new week, it's time to do art and play and things. Things are very important <laughs> if you're new to the channel and uh, haven't seen a video of this kind yet. Well, let me introduce myself. My name is Sarah. I'm the artist behind Pinsel Geschichten, which is the name of this channel. And I do like two things above all, and that is, well, above all if it comes to uh, activities, and that is playing board games and, of course, doing artwork. So today, as the title of this video will probably indicate, uh, I'm going to play with the November issue of the Art Box. The Art Box is available in Germany, Austria and Switzerland, if I remember correctly. And it is a monthly subscription box um, where you get supply, uh, supplied with uh, materials depending on the theme. And this month is Huevember. So after Inktober, now it's Huevember, which means all about color. And there's a few things that came with the box. Um, I had an overview about that in the last talk o'clock that I published. So if you watch this video the day it comes out, uh, go back two days um, in my video upload thingamajig page and look for the talk o'clock and I uh, talk about things there a bit more. Uh, but today I want to play with the supplies and there's uh, watercolors and some pens and paper and what I want to do first is... Uh, take the pens to my sketchbook and see what the colors like, what they do before I, well, maybe try a painting or a coloring or something with them. So for one, there is the Zik Kuretak Real Brush Marker, which is, uh, okay, really like a brush, so you can, Feather out the color nicely. Okay, let me see uh, something. Oh, well, let's try them dry first and then I will take them to watercolor paper or mixed media paper and um, try to dilute it with water. So they're quite juicy, but they feel dry. You, if I look against the light, I can definitely See the juice is flowing, but they're not puddling. They have a nice fine tip. So you can really put in some details there. And then there was this uh, Kure Color Fine Brush Manga Alcohol Based Marker. So this is probably gonna go through. This is a cold gray. See, yep, goes through just like every marker. That is alcohol based, but it has a nice tip. It says it's a brush tip, but it is not a super flimsy brush tip. This is, yeah, the bullet tip. Also pretty nice. And then we go, oh, I have to open this one. Where is the opening mechanism? There it is. <coughs> and this is the Wink of Stella in orange, it says, with glimmer. I can definitely see the glimmer. But it kind of looks like the gold. Let's see what the... This is the gold. Oh, no, it has more of a yellowish tint. All right. So, uh, okay, this is a warmer tone then like a red gold pretty much though it's called orange um whatever so okay these are the markers and what i want to do now is take them to watercolor paper and also play with these two watercolor thingies here but first um let me there's hmm, a brush let's take this one because before I want to test things on the paper they send, I want to 
uh, play with it on my kind of paper that is um, just, well, something like uh, scrap or whatever. I take these kind of papers to test things before I paint the paintings. So let's try with the green first. And it should be dilutable with water. Let's see how far I can get. Okay. It doesn't want to play as much if you apply it on paper right away. Let's see how it works when I pick it up from a palette. Okay, it's very subtle. Okay. And the gray is tested here on the palette. Okay, that's nice. The pale green is really very pale. And let's dilute you a bit quicker. Yeah, okay, you cannot let it sit on paper at all. Otherwise you won't be able to move it, but with the more visible colors this is definitely working well it's just not as much with the pale green here because it kind of i don't know if it's uh soaking into the paper right away or no i was just too slow for the first go okay that's that's um yeah like the tombow markers pretty much so I like that. Oh, I still have pumpkin on my fingers from the juice this morning. And I washed my hands 1,500 times, but pumpkin stains sometimes. <laughs> All right, let's try to play with these. I'm curious about these Colorex uh, Brilliant Watercolor. This is primary yellow. Let's try to open you without getting myself... Okay... This is interesting. Let's work with a few drops first. Damp. Oh, smells quite intense. Okay, let's pick it up. Oh, wow. This is more like, this is an ink, right? This is not watercolor. It says brilliant watercolor. Um, let's see. Transparent ink made from dyes, bright rich colors, limited light fastness, diluted with water for airbrush, brush, and pen. Warning! Flammable liquid and vapor keep out of reach of children, keep away from the heat, hot surfaces, sparks, open flames, and other ignition sources. No smoking. Okay, so this is... Grown up, uh, this is a grown up supply for meaning for grown up people, but I like that you can layer. See, okay, it says also that you can mix the two. So let's open the burgundy red, get a little drop. Now, well, this is a rich color. And try this. Oh, wow. I like this color. Nice. Let's see how. This is a nice one. Let's try to mix the two on paper. So I'm going to take the yellow, put another layer on top and see how uh, how much I can let the red bleed into this. Are you bleeding at all? I have to make you bleed.
Okay, but you can mix it kind of on paper. Let's see if I can mix it on the palette. Yeah, that's two. So maybe, huh, maybe I should <laughs> have my mixing palette on the paper so that you guys can also see what I'm doing here. Okay, can definitely darken this up then. Okay, and can I lighten things again? No, so it does behave like a watercolor or a normal ink. All right, so that is that. I really like the red. I definitely want to play with that. And there is four sheets of paper here. Two that feel like a marker paper, so um, like a Copic, they're very smooth. And two that are a mixed media paper. I think, uh, yeah, Canson Imagine, it says. So I, hmm. let's take one of you maybe. Um, should probably also tape it and then I let me think what I want to paint. So it is November. It is kind of cold. It's getting cold outside. The colors don't really say that um, I should go for something autumn me because well, no, different, uh, different approach. Um, the weather outside and the the feel outside is more the gray blue uh, kind of <laughs> part of the color spectrum because it is not the sunny gold autumn um, time anymore. At least not here. At least not this morning. So either I. Uh, take something totally different as my inspiration or I uh, have to find something else that is autumn-y, november -y, with red and yellow or I don't take those colors and play with the other things. Hmm. Decisions, decisions. Oh, I know. I actually, yeah, hold on. I have to get the painter's tape. Because I have to uh, tape the paper to the table. Otherwise, this will probably buckle just like any other paper under too much water. But um, I've just been thinking about something that I could, well, paint, that I could try this with, maybe, yeah, let's put it portrait style. Um, on my dinner table, I do have decorations uh, that are seasonal. And for autumn, of course, I have pumpkins and um, corn. Because uh, I liked the colors. Usually I only have pumpkin, but uh, this year they didn't really keep for as long as I needed. Only two of the uh, six or seven pumpkins that I bought. That's those tiny decorative pumpkins, you know. So this year I uh, bought corn for the first time, those decorative corn things <laughs> things that's the word um and uh it is kind of yellow and red um so uh i could definitely paint one of these corn 
pieces to try out those colors and have maybe a loose watercolor painting there, watercolor ink painting, just using the rest here. I think that would be cool. So let's uh, paint the corn with uh, with water because I think I can have it a very loose watercolor repainting then maybe go with uh, a marker on top maybe the gray zig marker and um, get in some details there but first it's just wetting down the surface to where I think my corn should be or maybe a second one that would be cool too I think It's paper is buckling quite a bit already, but um, this is no watercolor paper. This is a mixed media paper, so they can only hold so much water. So let's go in with the yellow. Just on the outer rims my corn here and also that papery leaf stuff at the top and then I'm gonna come in with the orange bit is not as flowy it's more oily feeling so this really sits on top of the paper rather than soaking in as other inks sometimes do or watercolor inks or whatever you want to call them They don't really flow where it is wet to the point that they flow a lot. You can see it really sits here and the paper in between those lines is definitely wet. So um, this is just different. Putting down my basic values here and starting to shade. the red <coughs> sorry 
sorry. Just the pure red and I'm now going to shade a bit more heavily. To shade heavily but not that heavily. Okay so when it sits on paper it's not really movable that much anymore. Just trying to see where I need to lay a what. Okay, I'm going to dry this off and then I'm probably gonna dump layer number 200, <laughs> no, the next layer on it. Sits on the paper nicely. Let's go in and Add some details. I'm just taking the dark red. It's funny, it looks so rich on the palette, but once you put it down here on paper, it isn't as rich anymore. But then when it's dry, it pretty much gets the richness back, so to say. I think I need a little more of the yellow. We 
really just a smidge, not that much. Just to add a bit of the brightness maybe here. Just a bit more of a rich tone. And maybe a bit here. I'm going to dry this off and then bring in the uh, real brush marker on my palette. Let me clean that one up just to make sure. Okay. And just to make sure that they don't mix, I'm going to dry off this uh, painting once more. Okay, this is all dry. Nice, nice, nice. Now let's see. My tiny brush. Putting in some of the dark shadows. Okay, number one, number two is right around here. And also up here. And of course, there's going to be a huge shadow up here. And I think I'm going to enhance this curve here just by putting a bit of dark there as well. Because this is where the paper meets the corn. Okay. That's quite like it, I think. So I'm going to close this, dry it, and then draw in the details. And for that, I take one of the pens that came with Inktober. One thing that I want to do is uh, have a frame 
And since I don't plan to color the whole background, I'm just going to draw this in right now and then remove the uh, tape. Okay. Did it leak underneath the tape? Okay, okay, okay. Have to be careful. Not to smudge anything with the pigment on the tape. Okay, should be safe now. Now I can paint or draw in details, like for example. those papery lines here. And now I remember why I don't like to <laughs> draw corn that much because these repetitive things here, rows and rows of kennels, kernels, kennels, kernels, kernels is the word, is quite uh, not my favorite thing to do, but well. Some of these kernels are quite dark, so maybe I should 
not forget to have some of them uh, black or this um, zig dark gray that's also an option so not talkative today which is not really great for this video I'm sorry about that but I kind of live in my head today um, I sometimes do usually when weeks have been really stressful um, I need some peace and quiet after that and it's really difficult to then talk throughout the whole video it's just a quirky thing I do oh well wow. I think that's something that every introvert deals with so I hope you don't mind I'm sorry <laughs> sorry about that but it's it's just me I really try to not live in my head uh, on these videos but you know I've been not really thinking something to uh, say while I was drawing these things or coloring it's more like okay play so it's not even a thought like okay I need to shade this more here and I want to do that or this or that while I was um, painting or now uh, sketching or drawing um, the only thing that I really thought were the things that I said out loud so yeah, it sometimes is just the way it is with my brain. I think I'm just using this week to uh, reload and soak up energy and uh, recharge my batteries so that I can be vacation next week and deal with a lot of lovely people but it is exhausting so I need to think my body is just in recharge mode and making sure that everything's fine while you are seeing this I'm on vacation so it's my yearly vacation time looks like a street almost let's change things up here on this particular bit of corn not have everything in wonderful rows but skip things here and there I have the odd kernel Otherwise, it really looks like a cobble street. And I don't want that because that is not yummy or fun to look at on your dinner table decorations. But I'm really looking forward to spending time with my friends next week or this week actually while you're watching. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. 
it's also board game time so <laughs> we already made plans with some of our friends okay was saying okay this game we we have to play one thing there uh, it's probably gonna take us maybe 15 16 hours so uh, we should definitely carve out some free time to do so it's really fun <laughs> excuse me to uh, plan ahead that way so now i'm just going in with the zig clean brush marker and putting in some dark kernels I might darken them up with the uh, black ink marker that I just worked with. Let's see. I think it would be a nice idea. To have them maybe a bit darker than what I can produce with this real brush marker. So let's go over it. Really dark. Another great thing about vacation is we're gonna have one more week of warm weather because it's actually the first really cold day today. Uh, this night, uh, tonight we had two degrees Celsius and uh, so last night and tonight we're supposed to have one degree only so it's getting cold here. I mean I don't mind but it's nice to have one more sunny week and warm week around 20 degrees before we go on the winter mode here like full-on winter mode all right uh, i think i want to have the cold gray as a bit of a well, not a background per se, but like um, a shadow, maybe drop shadow. Or maybe just something that feathers out towards the top. Oh, I picked up the other ink. Great. And that was sarcasm. Nice. I can hear the goose are flying south. Don't know if you can hear it. Following a bit more. Well, what to do about you, Willy Wonka? Um, oh, I know. 
let's see. This one doesn't have the papery bits. So how about they come down something like this? And I have to paint this in, so I'm hoping that my paper doesn't buckle too much now. Just a little bit of red and a bit of yellow. Water brush, oh, maybe the big one. Let's test how it goes over the alcohol ink, the uh, alcohol marker there. A bit of red. I think I might be better off using the uh, smaller brush. So let's do that with yellow. Lots and lots of yellow. Then a smidge of the red, bringing it in from the bottom. Maybe a bit more than a smidge of red. Just to darken things up. Drawing this off and then bringing in some more of the yellow, I think, and the Zig Gray marker. Okay, I'm not only bringing in the yellow, but also some more of the red, I think. First yellow, just to golden things up. Nice and yellow. And then a bit of the red. marker. This is dry. So I can go in. To put in the darkest shadow. So 
put here. That's more like it. One more dry off and then I think I can do the last little thing that is a white gel pen. Adding a few of the The highlights really, I have a water drop there. What's wrong today? <sighs> so, need to repair this. The red. But now, I wanted to have a little bit of a highlight. Some of these. Kernels. Maybe some also here. That's that. Oh, let me sign it. And that would be that. So, ooh, of course I have to paint myself because that's what you do. <laughs> so, ah, uh, let's see. What do I think? Um, I really like the colors together. It's not that... I would say I would probably buy more of them because I have so many other watercolors and inks that I'm not in need, I think. However, I really like them, so I'm definitely going to combine them with my other inks and such. So especially the combo here, it makes it for a very rich color and I like that a lot. Also, this is a nice burgundy color, which I don't have as an ink yet. I have the warm red and the pinkish kind of red, but not this deep burgundy tone. So that's awesome. Um, I'm not going to try this uh, other paper for now, but let me think. 
Hmm. I will pay. Yeah, I will pay.、Uh, blah, pay.、Mm-hmm. I will paint or draw with the other paper on the other paper here. With the supplies a bit more next week,、um, and、uh, yeah, try maybe the markers with、uh, water or something. I. I don't know what I'm going to paint yet, but that is a thought that I'm going to、um, uh, indulge in when when it's、uh, the next week, when it's time to produce the next video. So,、uh, thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. If you're cur- curious about the art box,、uh, there's a link in the description box below where you can take a look at、uh, what it costs and all the things, what it supplies, blah blah blah, all of that.、Um, And、uh, I'm gonna be back next Monday. The blog post for this video is、uh, live by now. You can check out the web page also in the description box below. The newest、um, post, if you watch this when this comes out,、uh, is supposed to be the blog post for this. I'm gonna yawn now because this is what I do. <laughs> Oh gosh, guys! I'm so ready for vacation. You have no idea. But yeah, that's that's that. I hope you enjoyed. Have a great day. If you're new to the channel, like what you see,、uh, check out the other playlists and videos, and uh, subscribe. And uh, have a wonderful day and a wonderful week. I'm gonna see you next time.